Roll call. Mrs. O'Flaherty. Mr. Weiner. Here. Mr. Weller. Here. Mr. Backus. Here. Ms. McDaniel Browning. If you would please join me in saluting the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Superintendent Kegley, have there been any changes to the agenda before? No, there has not. So I have a motion to approve the agenda this evening. Second. Roll call. Mr. Weller? Yes. Mr. Backus? Yes. Mr. Weiner? Yes. That would move us into reports. Uh, I don't believe there's anything from the unions tonight. No. Um, so, uh, then, Treasurer Swarnton, do you have your financial uh, reports for this evening? Um, yes. You have the May financial report on tonight's um, agenda for approval, which I'm happy to answer any questions about. Um, in addition to that, there is an amended permanent appropriation resolution um, on the agenda just to clean up um, funds for year end mainly. Um, there are the adjustments have to do with our federal grants um, and the funds that will be carried over to next year. Um, so I'm happy to answer questions about either of those items if you happen to have any. Anyone have any questions? Mm -hmm. It seems like we've had a lot of those permanent uh, appropriation resolutions. We have had um, a handful. Um, we've had a couple of additional grants that we've received partway through the year um, that have caused us to have to amend those uh, partway through. And then with this year and the pandemic and some of our programming has shifted. Um, so we've had to carry over those funds for some things um, for next year, so um, it's a good good problem to have, um, but but definitely causes some budgeting challenges as we as we look through those and wanting to make sure that we're able to spend all those dollars wisely, not just spending to spend. The only other update that I had was just um, for the fair school funding plan and House Bill 110 that that is um, in conference committee, so we're anxiously awaiting um, that some form to be adopted here um, within the next two weeks before July 1st. Keep our fingers crossed. Yes. yes. We continue to work with our professional organizations and have reached out to have additional conversations with our senators. So we will keep you updated as we proceed with those meetings as well. Okay. Superintendent Kegley then. Yes, good evening. I would like to start by welcoming Mr. Sherman to the podium. He will be providing us with a facilities update, and then I'll go into my update. Good evening. Nice to be back with you as we slowly return to normal. It is. Uh, it's been very busy, as you know, during the past year, regardless of all of the other issues we've had to deal with. Uh, just a quick update on construction and some of our summer activities. Uh, we open our Carlisle main office after spring break. As you probably are aware by now, it's not fully operational. Uh, that flow is so much better with a secure office entry and uh, the staff have got everything moved in and are arranging their furniture and things are working out well. Uh, a few weeks ago, we finished up some of the outside work, including some concrete pours and some landscaping. So we can check Carlisle off the list. Uh, Dempsey is on schedule with a few minor delays on roofing and whiteboards and some other issues. The roof panels should have been on by now. They are in the process of being received and delivered, so you'll start to see the real green roof go on the addition. It'll look more like, like a school building here very soon. Found out last week that some of our marker boards are back ordered uh, and due to arrive in October. Unfortunately, wow. we are seeing some <coughs> related delays in terms of materials and, and products, anything with a chemical in it, obviously is rooted in Texas, and that had some uh, delays over the winter with their power outage issues. Uh, the lumber industry and a lot of other industries slowed down significantly last year. And, and now as they ramp up, they find themselves flooded with orders and work. And so we continue to, to work around some of those issues. And again, they're minor in scope, fortunately for us at this point. So nothing that will uh, prevent Dempsey uh, from opening up on schedule. And Mr. Sherman and I did brainstorm some ideas today with the whiteboards, so we do have some plans in place if those do continue to be delayed until October. Yeah, we have several uh, extra whiteboards uh, sitting around. 
and our uh, contractor will help us locate some, some temporary. Uh, over at Schultz, we're still on schedule to open up. Uh, as you might remember, we occupied some of the new classrooms after spring break there as well. So the teachers uh, were, were very patient and kind in working with us as we jumbled everything around. Uh, new rooms were occupied and then they started the renovations right away on the, on the office area and some of the existing classrooms that were converted. Uh, now the re-roofing that we were going to do, you might remember a change order uh, from earlier this year. And the re-roofing of the original roof is probably going to have to wait till next year as a separate project. Uh, again, because of COVID, they've discontinued the roof decking that we specified uh, that has to provide the proper airflow through the roof. And they've also temporarily discontinued our shingles. So we really are left with no other choice but, but the way to do that. Now we do have uh, the means with which to repair some of the more major leaks in the, in the office area on that shingle roof, which our contractor will take care of for us. So uh, we'll keep everything safe and dry until next year when we can address that project. Uh, out back, the new road is coming along that the city is connecting. Uh, the, the bus loop is ready to be paved. So uh, egress and, and, and access uh, from the south for the buses is on schedule to, to be ready to go before school starts back there. Uh, our playground improvements at Schultz will begin. You might remember that was an alternate for bid package four. Uh, so I'll work on that Schultz playground addition, uh, as well as the work at Congress, Smith and Woodward uh, we'll be starting after a delay of a couple of weeks that we've experienced due to some unforeseen circumstances. Uh, but the plan is still to have the playground done at Schultz and the playground done at Conquer and the playground done in the parking lot done at Smith by the beginning of the school year. Now these playgrounds were designed uh, to the latest access standards, but, but we've chosen to add a few extra ADA pieces and go the extra mile for some of our students with special needs. Uh, some of those uh, pieces were added later and, and may uh, be delayed a little bit in being installed, but they'll be ordered as part of those packages. And we do plan to make similar upgrades uh, at our other two elementary schools uh, as uh, finances permit over the next year or so. That brings all of our playgrounds up to code, up to modern standards, uh, it's really for the kids, it's something I'm excited about. Everything we do is for the kids, but these are the playground. They truly are for the kids. <laughs> um, again, weather permitting, uh, work should proceed with those projects, and then we should see those completed by the time our school year starts. Other projects this summer, if life goes on in other buildings, uh, HVAC repair in several buildings, uh, paving in selected areas, Chalkboard removal at Hayes, where we're taking down the old chalkboards, putting up monitors and whiteboards. And of course, the roofing work here at Willis, which is hard to miss. Um, out of transportation, um, we're preparing routes for next year, pretty much based on routes from two years ago. No big wholesale changes in store. Uh, we do expect a staff shortage, as most school districts are experiencing. Uh, right now, five to seven drivers short probably about 10%. Uh, recruiting and training is always ongoing. Uh, we've got a career board and pipeline now. A couple we'll see on the agenda tonight. So uh, we've not lost hope yet, but we're keeping our eye closely on that transportation uh, piece uh, for the next school year. Uh, in the custodial world, we do expect to continue a lot of the best practices that we employed last year in terms of clean, disinfecting, we found a way to make that work and integrate that into our work schedule. It's the right thing to do for many reasons. Not just COVID, the flu, uh, MRSA, lots of other things we deal with on a regular basis. Uh, we're just gonna step that up and, and keep that level of intensity with the cleaning and the sanitation. And of course, we're hiring custodians as well. We've added a couple new positions and, and we only look for a few subs to not only handle the building, and the cleaning and maintenance, but also the activities and the other things that occur uh, that we'll expect to see back here uh, over the next several weeks. And that's all I had for you this evening. Any questions? Who is the Woodward edition supposed to be? Uh, Woodward will be beginning along with Conger and the Smith projects. Yeah. The fence is up over there, that's actually where the construction trailer is based. And, and, and they're going to start on the addition 
uh, pieces at Woodward, the office and the classrooms, and then do a lot of the reno work, the renovation work next. When they can work outside of the footprint of the existing building, there's minimal disruption to the teachers. Mm -hmm. And as you know, there's no extra room at Woodward to shut up people. Okay. Yes. I appreciate Jason's work. It's obviously been very busy um, throughout this time in the past several months, and the enhancements to the playgrounds are going to be exceptional. We'll be so excited to share with you some of those pictures as those start to become completed. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. As you know, this evening our meeting is being recorded. It will be posted on the website for anyone to view after tomorrow. And then also wanted to update you all, we are, and we were all surprised today, we have 390 kindergarten registrations complete or in progress. That is exceptional. We are expecting about 440 kindergartners, so to have 390 of them enrolled in the middle of June is incredible. We're very excited about our newest class of Pacers as we welcome them to Delaware City Schools. As I'm sure you saw when you logged in this evening, our website has received an enhancement and upgrade. Jen Rui, our Director of Communications, has been working exceptionally hard on that. We know that each of the pages are going to require some special touches and fixing those to match the templates that have been overlaid, but it definitely has a much crisper appearance and will be easier to navigate on phones. So we are excited about that and I appreciate Jen's work. As you know, we also have been working on our American Rescue Plan, the Safe Return to School and Continuity of Services Plan. So our district team has been working hard on that. Some of the highlights that I'd like to share with you this evening, of course, are the continual changing of filters of our HVAC systems, but also some enhancements and upgrades and replacements, as Mr. Sherman had alluded to earlier, specifically one of those at Hayes High School over the Art Wing area. In addition to that, we have purchased additional water bottle filling stations. So they're the water fountains with the built-in water filling station. Those will be installed at all of our buildings and multiple at the high school in Dempsey for this coming year. Air purifiers are placed in our clinics, our training room, and our student registration. So those areas where we're seeing the most traffic flow, those air purifiers have already been installed. And then we have continued to host our vaccination clinics for families who are interested in that. Um, we just had our second one here on Saturday for those 12 to 18 year olds, and that went very well. We appreciate the Delaware Public Health District offering those around the county for those that are interested. Connectivity will also be a major focus of that plan as it has been. Jen Fry and her team have done an exceptional job of making sure that devices and connectivity are in the hands of our students. We all realize the need for those additional hotspots in many of our homes, and that will continue to be a piece that we're looking at. We are still actively collecting all of those Chromebooks and hotspots that have not been returned yet so that we can make the necessary repairs to have those ready for school. So we're hopeful and we continue to make calls to get all of those returned. An update on the bullying and harassment data for second semester, elementary, reported none, middle school one, and high school none. We know that this also is a unique year. We'll continue to meet the needs and work on those systems for our children. Supplies for Scholars is up and ready to go for that in-person event with United Way Strengthening Families. Families are encouraged to sign up online and that is for all of Delaware County. We'll have an evening event on July 29th, which I'm very excited about because many of our families are working and the during the day event was not accessible for them. So we're excited to offer that evening and then during the day events then on July 30th and then a drive through on August 3rd. So similar to what we did last year, families are able to choose whichever option works best for them. Summer school is going exceptionally well at the high school and middle school and our third graders right now. Summer lunch is being provided to them and breakfast. And then our online learning tools are still available to all of our elementary children throughout the summer. So those are accessible every day. Summer camps have had exceptional attendance. Most of them are seeing double if not triple what they've seen past years. So that's been a great opportunity for our students to be out and active. As well, Summer Academy, our partnership with Delaware City Schools and Buckeye Valley was awesome. We had over 220 staff participate and it was offered in that blended model similar to this past school year. You could come in person, you could be virtual, 
or you could do a combination of both. And the Gazette did a wonderful article highlighting that that you'll be able to see if you log on. So lots of things happening. We are still very busy and looking forward to planning as we open school in August. Any questions for me? summer lunch program continuing in. It is. So we have our pickups both at Conquer and at Woodward, and you pick up on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So you get three meals on Tuesday, four meals on Thursday, and that is breakfast and lunch. Um, and as you remember, we did make the enhancement with Tammy Kane and Sally working together for the half gallon of milk, so that's more accessible for the families instead of all of the individual cartons. Program, so they are. They're doing very well. Um, we're obviously seeing more numbers at Woodward, but that's where we usually host our summer lunch program, so families are used to going there. Um, our volunteers are all coming out, so it's been great to just engage the community in the past, whereas last year that was all on our food service and transportation staff. This year our volunteers are all working and supporting that as well. And then Carrie Hunt, our new um, director of Family Resource Center, works with other groups and she personally puts together activities that goes home, that go home with the families in addition to that. Good. Any other questions? All right. Thank you, Thank Superintendent you. Uh, This evening we do have a public participation request from Mr. James Sipak regarding registering senior, his senior to vote. Uh, we thank you for attending the meeting to address the Board of Education. Statements are limited to five minutes. The Board will hear what you have to say, although Board members and school officials will not answer any questions during the public participation. If the Board does request further information about your topic, uh, we will contact you. Otherwise, the President, Board President, will instruct the Superintendent or other Administrator to follow up with any actions required. Come on up. Well, the November election will be here before you know it, and, and there's going to be some seniors that are going to be getting ready to vote. And, well, and uh, we want to get them registered to vote in this coming election, make their voice heard. As Delaware City Schools is having some board members run, and they want to get their voices heard too. And, and the deadline for register to vote, I believe, is October. Fourth, I mean, so um, if you want to register to vote, go down to the Board of Elections down in Delaware, and which is on 23 by the Old Odd Lots location, and or you can register at your school, library, or the BMV if you'd like. So, any questions? Oh. Thank you, Mr. Saipa. Mr. Weiner, I'm so sorry, Mr. Beckes. I do believe we have one more public participation. Ms. McLennie will bring that up. Just yes. a question. Do we typically, I know when I was in school, we did this with our government classes, civic classes, we helped uh, register our students. Yes. So I assume that'll happen when we get Correct. back in the fall, too. Yes. To get them registered. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Beckes. Is that uh, Allison Easter Day? You'd like to? I didn't know that. And you're speaking about wearing masks uh, at SEC. So I, the first question that I had written down, I just, my son goes to Carlisle for summer SAC, and I just, because I think the ordinance in Delaware City and Delaware County is that you don't have to wear masks, so I'm just wondering why the children are still wearing masks at Carlisle. That's my question. Well, again, as we indicated, we do not take questions. However, we can uh, address that through the uh, superintendent or other administrator after the meeting. Okay. And then the other question that was on my sheet is when will you have the, um, my mom's a retired school teacher, so there's been a lot in the paper about the critical race theory. And so I just want to know how you guys are going to address that in the you know, when the school year starts, are you going to, how you're, if you're going to be changing what's going to be taught to the children in regards to that. And again, as we stated, we do not right. take questions. However, we can refer that yeah. to the proper administration. And yeah. We have your contact information. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Is there anything further that you wish to say? No.
Well, thank you for your participation this evening. Uh, that brings us then to the consent agenda. I believe Mr. Stewart will be walking us through that. Well, good evening, as Mr. Sherman indicated. It's great to be back with you all in person. Um, and the Human and Material Resources Office has been particularly busy this spring with the help of our district administrative team uh, with a number of personnel action items that we're pleased to bring to you tonight, as you'll see in the agenda. We do have some resignations uh, from certified staff tonight. Karat Guna, uh, one of our teachers, uh, classified staff, Caitlin McMillan, and then Jacob Bonifiglio. Mr. Bonifiglio is not leaving the district, though, however. He will be working with us uh, as our new assistant athletic director through the AESC's Council of Government. So that's why his resignation is on there tonight. We will still see him serving our, our community and our students. All recommending for employment tonight, Mr. Raymond Eddy, uh, Joshua Hill, Abigail Jenkins, Jacqueline Pearl, Michael Kibbett, Caitlin McMillan, Ann Halleck, Ryan Wallace, and Marianne Ware. Uh, we are asking for a correction on certified staff salary uh, for Sarah Jones. We approved her at the last board meeting at the bachelor's degree level. She did provide transcripts that reached her to the bachelor's 150 semester hour level. So therefore, the salary correction. Uh, classified staff recommended employment time, Grace Vanilla, Christina Brown, Judy Byer, April Horst, Siobhan Kenny, Kayla Kuna, J.C. Munyan, Monica McCarthy, Wendy Horn, Emily Rossi, Anna Smith, and Nicholas Verdet. Uh, we are also asking you to renew uh, or to employ as a classified substitute uh, at this time until July 1 for Kimberly Estes. At the, you'll notice that's at the former rates. And then you'll notice then renewals of classified substitutes at the July 1 rates for next year. Um, and I'm sorry, and those additionals of Brian Link. Jack Thomas and Peter Catalano. And then our sub classified substitute renewals tonight Mary Anderson, Jenny Artemis, Brian Burke, Judy Byers, Rebecca Connell, Michelle Davenport, Deb Desmond, Carol Jonah, Sandra Dreyer, Mary Escalante, Kim Estes, uh, LaDonna James, Connie Kennedy, Heidi Love, Amanda Lawyer, Allison McFadden, Rhonda Miller, Melanie Pitson, Gary Rogue. Christina Robinson, Jody Stewart, Vicki Van Gilder, Terry Webb, Stephanie Wheeler, Amanda Willis, and Jeannie Young. We're also asking approval tonight to add to the summer work group, Rebecca Turner, and then are approving extended time in the amount of two days or 16 hours for Mr. Thomas Sanson in the custodial department for some additional cleaning time. Then our team, especially Angie McKinney uh, and Craig Geese, worked very diligently to help us craft a new job description for a transition specialist. We're asking for approval of that job description this evening. Uh, and that, that is a brief summary of tonight's personnel items as part of the consent agenda. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to entertain those. Mr. Stewart, just a question on the educational assistance. We are a lot of tonight. Are those uh, a lot of positions just replacement positions, or are we expanding some of those positions because of additional needs? Many of them are replacements. However, there are a number of those that are also additionally new. Uh, as you'll know, we are adding some new uh, units at different buildings, and typically there are two assistants uh, joining a licensed teacher in each of those units. So a number of those are on new positions. Position. Okay, great. Thank and thank you. you for that additional follow-up as Mrs. Swearingen shared with us um, when she was going over the five-year forecast. We did have to make that adjustment due to our special education numbers and the needs for those services. So thank you for that clarification. You indicated uh, Mr. Montefiglio was going to be the uh, assistant athletic director. What was the Agency is Educational Service Center of Central Ohio oh, okay. Council of Government. Uh, we, we've done the contracted stuff. Okay. Okay. I, I <laughs> is that is he replacing Carla DeLong's yes, position? Is. Okay, that's fine. Right. 
Do you all see him around the middle school? Thank you very much. Also on there, there was the approval of the financial report. Did anyone have any questions for our treasurer? So do I have a motion to, um, or is there any additional discussion on the consent agenda? Yeah. Then do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Backus. Yes. Mr. Weller. Yes. Mr. White. Yes. That brings us to tonight's uh, action items. Uh, we have 5.1, approving the Meta Tech Services Agreement. Um, are there any uh, discussions that need to be had with the Tech Services Agreement? Do I have a motion to approve the uh, agreement? Second. Roll call. Mr. Weller. Yes. Mr. Backus. Yes. Mr. Weiner. Yes. And then we also have 5.2, approving the fiscal year 2021 amended permanent appropriation resolution. Uh, is there any additional discussion or questions? If not, do I have a motion to approve that? So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Backus. Yes. Mr. Weller. Yes. Mr. Wyatt. Yes. Uh, and that brings us back to any additional comments, uh, Superintendent Gagwood. I do not have anything additional at this time unless anyone has any questions for me. Are there any board comments? Uh, finally, that brings us back to the calendar. Uh, we have the summer lunch program pickup still continuing at Woodward and Conger. Uh, the Dempsey Middle School summer school math programming from June 7th through the 25th. Uh, Hayes High School summer school programming is going on. We have third grade reading camp. Our next meeting would be July 12th. Uh, the summer boost program for kindergarten, first, second grade are continuing. And then, as was mentioned earlier, the Supplies for Scholars events uh, on July 29th and 30th. Um, that brings us to the end of the, move, uh, the meeting. Do I have a motion to adjourn the proceedings? So moved. Uh, second, real quick, I would not be here in July. Okay. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Backus? Yes. Mr. Weller? Yes. Mr. White? Yes.